Am I the asshole for, stealing, my sister's baby? My, F29, little sister, F21 we'll call her Jane, has a 14-month baby girl. We'll call her Sarah, whom I have had custody of since late June of 2022. Jane was divorcing her husband, jobless, and homeless. I offered to take temporary guardianship of Sarah so she would be safe and cared for while Jane got her life together. At first, she turned me down. However, after Sarah was dropped off to our mom's house in dirty clothes and an old diaper by a stranger, while she was supposed to be under the care of her father, Jane agreed to give her to me and my wife. Now we made clear that it would be temporary and that Jane would still have full access and could get Sarah back whenever she felt ready. However, during the last six months, Jane has completely disappeared from Sarah's life. She doesn't ask about her, she doesn't make any effort to visit her. She doesn't ask us to bring her to visit. She has gotten a job and a, an unsafe, place to stay, yet hasn't offered to take any financial responsibility, not even in the form of buying her gifts. She doesn't call to talk to her or see her. I spoke to Jane recently about all this, and her defense is that it's too emotionally hurtful to see Sarah because of how much it hurts and how much she misses her. Her other excuse is that she doesn't have a car or enough money to buy Ubers or diapers. I told her how absolutely ridiculous all that is. You don't need a car or money to call or text. We have always made clear we'd be willing to bring Sarah to her, and she spends a wasteful amount of money on food and vapes. Even after speaking to her about the things she should or could be doing, she still has made no changes. Because of this, my wife and I have decided to look into our legal options for adoption. Sarah has legally been abandoned, and we only need to keep her a little longer before the courts would allow termination of Jane and her husband's rights. Husband is even more Mia than Jane is. Jane is livid about this and is threatening all kinds of things, but has done nothing. Important information. After I offered Oregonally and before we actually got physical custody of Sarah, my wife and I attempted IVF and failed. We hadn't told anyone about this, even family. However, I told Jane about this on day one just so that there would be full honesty and so that none of this would seem sneaky if it were to come out later. Jane is bringing this up in a very hurtful way during all this saying that I am trying to steal her baby since we can't have one of our own, we have one adopted son already. This is very far from the truth. We are genuinely worried about the safety and well-being of Sarah if she were to go back to Jane, and the fact that Jane has essentially ghosted her baby, we feel we have every right to pursue permanent guardianship and adoption. So, am I the asshole? Edit 1. As several people have asked, why don't I take in my sister too? I don't have space or money for an adult. Sarah has a bed in our room, and we spend about $700 a month on her. There is no way we could cover an adult, too. And even if we could, she is not someone I would live with. She is a very unclean person, doesn't shower or wash her clothes, and hangs out with junkies and other questionable people. She lost her last living situation because her roommate was arrested for possession of meth in the home. My wife and I have a seven-year-old son, and now Sarah, to protect. Edit 2. In regards to the $700 a month, that is an average. She came to us with nothing. We had to buy clothes, bottles, formula, a bed, a car seat, a stroller, etc. Now that a lot of the big stuff is out of the way, it's not so bad, but babies, kids are expensive. She's growing fast, so clothes are a constant as well as dappers, wipes, and medical care. Additionally, I'm including all the legal fees we've paid. We count everything because we're keeping all receipts as part of proof of Jane's abandonment of Sarah. My state calculates the financial side of abandonment as a certain percentage of total expenses. Edit 3. And this may come off a little aggressive, I certainly don't mean it to be. At what point is, reunification, just a nice way to say, ripped away from the only family, home she's ever known. It's a sweet sentiment and all, but Jane is a stranger to Sarah, and she is making no effort to change that. Years from now, when Jane finally gets it together, we're supposed to just give Sarah up? Even if we did a slow integration, how could that possibly be less traumatic than staying in her home with her family? If she was a little older and knew what was going on and could remember her mom despite being no contact for six months, that would be one thing. But she's an infant that has bonded to us the way infants are supposed to bond with their family in order to have secure attachments now and later in life. I truly, truly love my sister, and I really want her to straighten up and live a happy, healthy life. But the decisions she has made over the last six months are not ones that can be taken back. 
When Jane gets it together, I will be happy to let them have whatever relationship Sarah chooses to have with her, but it's not going to be a given that Jane will get her back. Final edit, as I have my answer. I do just want to make clear, as a lot of people seem to be focusing on the wrong thing here. The issue is not that Jane hasn't been able to get her life together in only six months. She has been through hell and back, and I'm very sympathetic to that. I understand it takes time, sometimes even years to fix. The issue is that she has completely stepped out of Sarah's life. She has ghosted her, she has given up all responsibility and contact, and she is a stranger to Sarah. Sarah doesn't even recognize Jane in any way. The issue I am talking about with Jane and why I feel we should pursue adoption is because of the utter abandonment Jane has shown over the last six months. Not the asshole I am an adopted kid. My mom was a drug addict and knew she wouldn't get her life together. Look. Wait until she can legally sever ties and don't bring this up again. Keep track of every time you reach out asking for assistance or offer to take the wee baby Sarah to her mother and she refuses or misses an appointment in CA it's 15 months to sever ties. Do not leave her unsupervised. Once you hit your state's threshold, lawyer up and make your case. If legally you already have temporary custody, a good portion of the battle is won. It's better to maintain the status quo and peacefully win the war than preempt an uphill battle in family court. Bide your time, make your case open and close, and then formally adopt your daughter. I wish you all the best. Am I the asshole for not letting our kids eat my wife's cooking? Throw away. I, 34 male, have a wife, 32 female, and we have two children 4 female and 7 male. I work as a manager at a care home and my wife owns a bakery with her mom. My wife cooks all the time because she is much better at cooking than I am, I cook sometimes. She is the one who takes care of the house, kids, and chores. Yesterday when I came back from work dinner was ready so I plated it up for everyone while my wife was washing her hands. My kids like their food cut up. I was cutting their chickens into pieces and it looked a bit pink I told my wife to look at it and she said, it's a little pink but it's fine. I told her I'm not letting them eat this if it's pink, she told me to stop being a baby and it won't kill them. I kept telling her it's pink in the middle they shouldn't eat that they can get food poisoning and that's it's dangerous for them. She told me, if you don't want them eating it then you can cook their dinner. I made them cheese and ham toasties, also made her one but she didn't eat it. She told me she isn't talking to me if I think her cooking is horrible. I don't think it's horrible I just didn't want our kids eating that. I told her to stop thinking she was right. So am I the asshole? I-N-F-O. Why didn't you just put the chicken back in the oven? In the meantime, you are the asshole. Pink chicken is not dangerous if the internal temp was high enough. Also, instead of just saying, oh honey, I am worried the chicken is a little pink. Can we cook it just a little more just to be safe? You went all the way. I am not serving that to the kids, and made a new meal altogether. Edit just for people that don't know how to cook. Chicken has to reach a temp of 165 degrees. It might still look pinkish but, it's totally fine to eat. Also, the chances of getting salmonella from undercooked chicken is pretty slim. The real risk is cross-contamination, not undercooking. Am I the asshole for asking my well-off friend to stop complaining about money? My friend, Haley has everything. Her own flat, a car, a well-paying job and she goes to at least two three foreign holidays with her husband per year. Meanwhile I have to rent, haven't been abroad in probably 10 years and almost live paycheck to paycheck. She is my oldest friend and our differences haven't caused any problems between us in the past, but now that our country is heading into a recession, she has started to be a bit too much. Every time we meet, she complains about money. How everything is so expensive, they will probably only go abroad once next year and will have to vacation in our own country during the summer. How she has no idea how they will be able to upgrade their flat to a bigger one in the future and they have so much debt. Oh, and now her husband has to take the bus to work, because gas is too expensive. Poor thing. I had enough when she was talking about not knowing how they would be able to afford a baby in this economy. I told her that I'm sick of her constantly whining about not being even richer not having one extra room in her flat and only going to Barcelona for four days next year. Meanwhile my boyfriend and I won't even have a Christmas tree this year and probably just skip Christmas altogether. She told me she had no idea I think of her like this and she can lend me some money if I need it, then proceeded to play the victim, told me that she is not rich at all, she lives in the same world as I do and inflation is affecting her too. 
How is she not rich at all, but has no problem lending me money? I told her that our struggles are not the same and her comparing them to each other is a slap in the face. This was a few days ago and I calmed down a bit since then. Everything I said was true, but now I'm thinking I might have been a bit too harsh on Haley and maybe she truly is just too privileged to see my point and can't help it. Am I the asshole? You are the asshole. I understand your frustration. I've been around people like her, too. But, you should have explained to her nicely your perspective and how her complaints made you feel instead of vilifying her, ignorance. She sounds like she'd understand you based on your story. And, inflation does affect everyone. It's a B.H. Am I the asshole for flipping out on a dog owner for ruining lunch? This happened about an hour ago at the time of typing. I have a three-month-old and wife is still on maternity leave. They came to visit me at work and brought Chick-fil-A for lunch. There is a canal area that has half a dozen decent-sized grassy areas with benches. There is a walking path along it that gets a decent amount of traffic. We find a completely empty grassy area with a bench. There is no one around and it's really nice out. My kid is sitting in the stroller just being chill. I'm talking to both my kid and wife while we are eating. My kid starts crying and I pick him up to soothe him. I see an over 50 guy walking by and he is eyeing us. Figured he was looking at my kid since he was crying. When all of a sudden a maybe 5 pound unleashed dog comes up and licks my wife's ankle. This scared the shit out of her. We are not exactly dog friendly. Neither of us grew up with dogs and have zero interest in owning, let alone interacting with them. Then a second small dog walks up to us. I turn to the guy and say get your dogs away from us. He just looks at me with this dopey look on his face. So I say it again. He half-heartedly tells the dogs to come to him. They don't listen to him. I'm like come on man, get your effing dogs away from us. We are eating lunch and don't want them around. My kid is still crying. My wife asks him to get them away too. He says to me, you don't like dogs? I'm just like no, I don't like dogs, I also hate bad. I used a worse word. Owners like you that don't leash their dogs and let them rudely walk up to people. I don't want your dogs around. He tells me I don't have to be so rude. I responded back with you are the effing prick that decided to let your dogs occupy the same 10 square feet as us despite there being other areas to go. If you wouldn't have bothered us, I wouldn't be flipping out on you. He looked shocked that someone didn't adore his dogs and walks away muttering at me under his breath. So am I the asshole? Edit. This is not a dog park, or even a regular park. Just an area with multiple grassy areas. There is a lot of signage to pick up poop and leash your dogs. Not the asshole. Leash laws exist for a reason. Not everyone wants dogs in their space. People have phobias, and allergies are a thing so for multiple reasons it's irresponsible to have them off leash in the same area as others without knowing if they're dog friendly. The fact that you had to ask multiple times and he seemed bewildered that he was in the wrong is aggravating and you're not obligated to be nice to people who don't have any respect for others in public. Not the asshole. He needed to have his dogs leashed. You have no idea if they have food aggression or are friendly or not. Absolutely hate irresponsible pet owners who do this. Not the asshole. So sick of entitled dog owners ruining public spaces. In ta. Most places have leash laws. You did ask nicely, like three times. A good dog owner would have pulled their dogs back after the first time. Actually, good dog owner wouldn't have needed the first time because they would have them on a leash.